We have King7 in the big. Uh, King7 is a relatively good shoving hand. Um, against late position opens in a final table scenario. You can either shove it as a shorter stack against a chip leader that's opening or as a chip leader against a middle stack. For instance, let's say I have 80 big blinds here and there's a 10 and eight, eight big blind stack and he opens, I could shove uh, in some cases. Um, but it's definitely not good to call all in with. Seven dudes is not gonna fuck with that. King four, not gonna fuck with it. Um, especially after seeing that hand, this guy, like this guy's not gonna be happy, right? He lost a really big pot. He was chip leading the final table at first. He lost a big pot against me, then he blasted off against them. So it's, uh, it's a bit of a situation where you don't wanna poke the bear here. Um, you know, and I think that's if you really pay attention to a final table, then if you look at game theory and it's like what's optimal, then you could definitely think like, oh, I just need to open here. But like sometimes you just see that somebody's on this, you know, spiraling out of control. Um, or at least, you know, if, if he picks certain hands to do things with that, he uh, he could be having a more of a tendency to go a little bit crazy. I, Yeah. Um, it could be good when you have uh, when you have a chip leader behind you to raise a little bit bigger because then they're gonna just gonna be less interested in uh, in re-raising you. But to open 2.3 as a standard on a final table is uh, very optimistic. All right, uh, we don't want to open suited connectors, especially as a short stack. Um, all our bluffs are really coming from, uh, at this point, from ace high hands or hand like king jack, king 10 offsuit. That's where our bluffs come from. Other than that, we have to pick up spots blind versus blind, blind versus button. Um, lots of bluffing hands will involve like queen 10 off, queen, uh, queen 9 off, or king jack off, or jack 10 off, so... We really, really want to be careful about not overplaying this hand. Uh, we don't want to play this three-way on a final table. Uh, generally, suited aces can be pretty good as shoves. I will say that... Oh, okay. Um, we have a decision to make now. I don't think that we're going to be shoved on very often, but if we are, then I'm probably just going to call. If we have a7 offsuit, the hand is pretty garbage in terms of playability, then I would just go all in myself. But when the hand uh, is suited, then all of a sudden it has a ton of playability post-flop. It just makes a huge difference. So you end up calling a lot uh, from the small blind and uh, reversely also checking them in the big blind when they're suited and shoving from both positions when you're 20 big blinds or less when they're offsuit. And that goes all the way up to ace-queen. All right, uh, bet the flop sort of for protection slash value. People will call a lot with queen high uh, hands. Um, I don't think he has six, six x because he probably would have bet at least like one half big blinds on the turn. So we're just gonna check. Um, gonna have to see in the side, but to just mock. Um, they're gonna have a lot of queen highs here. There you go, queen deuce. Um, that's why I was kind of like, we have to decide if they bet the river. Uh, if they have a hand like 10-9 that they call the flop with, let's say they have 10-9 in a backdoor draw, then I could imagine that they're gonna bet the turn. So once they check the turn, I kind of feel like they also wanna go to showdown, which also means that they're unlikely to bet an eight on the river. So if they do bet, you have to be a little bit more careful. All right, so sticking to our bluffing strategy of bluffing high cards and blockers, pre-flop, uh, super dry boards, we're just gonna bet one big blind. Um, we have a, a really big advantage when it comes to like pairs and really strong hands and ace jack and king jack and all that shit. So uh, we can just bet, I can just fold now. Um, like whatever, you know, good for him. Uh, I mean like good for him in a sense, whatever, we don't have to think about what he has because we have the worst fucking hand possible. Um, so I think our one big blind bet had enough uh, pressure to get a fold because if he has a hand like 10, nine, 10, eight, um, He's just gonna fold, and at the same time, we can still represent really strong hands because we're playing exactly the same, right? If we have a hand like aces, we're gonna bet one McBlind. We're gonna min raise preflop, bet one McBlind. If we have a hand like king jack, jack 10, queens, whatever, spade draws, we're all gonna play them the same. So, um, 
and a lot of those hands they don't have so uh, short stack opens under the gun gonna have some strength on it uh, ace four with so many people behind just not something we want to do also not a good shoving candidate because uh, we're not shoving into a light range um, you know uh, not only is this the ICM pressure on this player huge because he's going to play for his stack so often um, on top of that we haven't seen him play a hand so not that that matters of course because somebody could be playing perfect and having not ha had a hand to raise but um, it, it says some percentage you know um, I'm going to raise this in position lower suited trash is pretty good to raise on the final table uh, we're pretty short so I can just make it 3x um just gonna hope that we don't get limb raised. There could be some traps, of course, but there's also gonna be a lot of hands like Queen on offsuit that are just gonna fold, or like Jack Seven, or I mean, pretty much anything is a gigantic success if they fold it, right? When we have a stack like this, so um, it's these positions where we can still exercise some playability and do some stuff. Um, I'm just gonna bet one third and uh, hope that we get a fold here. Obviously, this is a reasonable investment for us. It would be fantastic to win this pot. But again, if we don't, then fine. But, you know, this is also just going to happen a whole lot. Um, because, like, let's be honest. Like, if you cover my hand and you're in the reverse positions and you're in a small blind and the fucking big blind makes it three big blinds off a 15 big blind stack, it's not like you think, yes, you know, <laughs> that's going to be a, a really shitty hand or something. All right, suited. So I'm just going to limp call, uh, meaning that I'm going to call. And if he raises, I'm going to call as well. Uh, again, I think that they show action with most of their ASAC, so we're just going to bet um, and pretend that we have it limped. Clubs is a little bit of a problem. I'm just going to check. If they check behind, I'm probably betting big on the river because I want a really maximum pressure. His king high floats that are like king 9, king 7, king 8, and also his 4x and jack x. And now I think we have a pretty easy fold, so... It's kind of like, sometimes in a very passive way, you can let somebody define the range, which is really nice. Um, over here, I think we have uh, a pretty good spot to just min race. We don't want to start open shoving for 18 big blinds. Uh, we can easily call if they shove. Um, so now we get a really good pot. Uh, we're just going to build one big blind. A lot of full equity, though. He's going to throw away a lot of hands, but it's a really advantageous situation for us. Um, if they would have shoved before the flop, we would call. Uh, ICM pressure doesn't mean that you have to just fold everything, um, you know, it, he's still going to shove all the, the weaker aces. Um, and now we go back to, you know, this hand we're just going to use as a blocker bluff because we have this one. Um, I'm just going to check as a, to start with, it's a fantastic board for us, but I think it's a board we're going to check a lot. Um, now we have to kind of figure out if we check again, will they take a stab at it, right? Because if we if we know we can check raise, it's always better than that we bet ourselves now. So I'm just going to bet and go for some value and also some protection, right? Because if the river is at 10, jack, queen, king, um, then we don't really know where we're at. Um, we we'll take another one down and here you see you win a few pots, you navigate a little bit and all of a sudden we're not doing so bad. So we're guaranteed 500 bucks. Um, if it's a min raise, I could consider it, but it's 2.2, which definitely makes a, a difference. And then the fact that we're at the final table with stacks also close, I just don't think I'm going to fuck with this hand. I think I'm going to stick a little bit to hands that either have a better high card value and are suited or hands that can like flop a straight and a flush. So like 9.5 or 9.4 is a huge difference just because of that little uh, little detail. All right, so player outs, uh, that's actually a pretty, I mean, I didn't see that. If this is, if this was an, uh, an open and then a shove, that's pretty insane. Uh, they just put half her stack in. Okay, that's a lot better for, uh, from their perspective, but still it's, uh, you know, we, you saw that um, when we're at 18 big blinds, we can still min raise a lot with, with blockers. Um, and now you kind of commit yourself with ace nine um, you're also never going to represent something super strong, right? So you, all your all your really strong hands are always going to min raise, so you kind of lose that as well. Um, it's kind of funny. I'm only playing four tables, but 
Just talk to some friends and talking a lot about this table and I just made a huge mistake on a different fucking table. Alright, blockers are blockers, but queen nine off, really not. Um, gonna cut it here. There's five people left now, so we bumped the money to 666. Next pay jump is 240. Um, not really the kind of hand I wanna bump up pre here. I'm just gonna take one off here because, um, like we said earlier, if somebody limps a small blind, they're gonna be pretty dense around this board. Um, I don't think they're expecting us to bet a whole, uh, a whole lot. Oh, we have a king. I think I can open here. It's not super easy to pressure me just because I'm so far behind the rest. Again, we just go towards the one big blind bet. We just have such a massive advantage on this board. Um, I was gonna bet our range, and this is something that, and this is why studying is important, right? Because, because I know that I can bet that board, I don't have to get deterred when it's uh, it's not working a few times in a row. All right, so still uh, we don't want to start uh, shoving yet. Oh, there's so much min raising still on final tables. We can just min raise this. Um, if we get shoved now, we're just gonna fold. That's fine. Uh, we do block really strong shoving hands, of course. Uh, and again, we're just gonna bet one big blind because we have all the strong hands. And um, good to see it works. But like I said, I don't need to see it works, right? Because I know it works. If he check raise me there, next time betting one big blind, you know, it's just absolutely fine. Um, if we get raised on, we can still definitely defend. I think those people uh, under definitely underestimate um, how much you can still defend when you're in a, when you're short. This is obviously fantastic um, because he bets one big blind. I think we're gonna raise here just because this board is super dynamic and these chips are worth gold to me, right? Um, there's also some gutters and stuff that we could be check raising. Um, also, if I call this board and the turn is fill in the blank, then I just don't think it's going to really yield us uh, um, a whole lot of bets from him. Because if I call here, and let's say the turn is a 5, a 7, a 9, a 10, you know, they, these are all cards that are generally going to be good for me. Um, so the king is going to have a lot of advantages for him. I Pretty much don't check raise a king unless it might be clubs, but I'm probably just calling clubs in this uh, final table setting. So I'm just gonna play uh, play post against him now. And now I have to decide if I want to check raise all in or not. Um, I think I'm just gonna check call and then call rivers. Um, the thing is though, the thing is because open enders would also just check call. They wouldn't check shove. They are gonna check call the flop a lot to begin with. So I think I just need to give him the opportunity to shove me off the hands. I mean, class fucking river there. Um, and that's fine. He had nine, so he bet a small for protection on the turn and uh, decided to check the river back. Um, because there's no point in betting anymore, right? If I miss my draws, then he wins. And if I have a queen, he loses, so. But really good hands, and we're more back in business now again. All right, it's king, so we're just gonna follow the same rules. We're just gonna min raise. And now we got a really nice all in spot. Um, somebody else all in, and this becomes a fold, believe it or not. Now we're all in. We hope to be up against the bluff. Like, I mean, the best situation here would for them to fold, but. That's pretty fantastic. And all of a sudden, bang, we're back in second. So, 
And now we can start opening hands like this again, especially with the chip leader and the small blind. So here you see, this is again that ebb and flow, the final table dynamics. Um, we pretty much play tons of fucking small hands and really small opens that don't leverage anything, uh, that don't leverage our stack and tournament life. Um, but we're still active, right? I mean, we played, you know, 6-8 suited, we have ace-2 soft, we, we, we raised 5-2 suited uh, there. Um, you don't want to be calling uh, too much on final tables when somebody covers you because uh, he can put so much pressure on me and he will, right? So I'm the person that's going to have to be on the lookout here, uh, which means that um, we most... Against when we get re-raised, we most often want to shove and not call. Okay, so we're going to defend. Okay, min-raise again, as usual. The only reason we could go bigger here is we have a smaller stack and there's a really big stack uh, somewhere here. Just makes their bluffing possibilities a lot smaller. Especially if we're on like 20 blinds, you can do some cool shit where you... Uh, um, you can do some cool shit where you just make it uh, a little bit bigger. Win some, lose some. Okay, it's 10. Easy falls. People just aren't really fucking around with 15 big blind preflop shoves. Kind of curious, now he has a bigger stack and he opens smaller. It could be, you know, so it could be, uh, like I said, that he didn't want to face pressure from bigger stacks. In that case, that would be really good. Uh, I'm just gonna flat this hand. I think it plays fine as a flat. I don't think the chance that we're gonna get squeezed by a weak hand here is really big, so. Now we have a decision to make. I think I'm gonna call here. I think that he's gonna shove sevens and sixes. It's gonna be higher pairs there as well, but lots of ace jack, ace queen, ace ten, ace, queen, ace king, so. And don't forget there's dead money in the pot as well. This 2.15 big blinds makes a huge difference if you look at the percentages. King, queen even. Okay, so. Well, estimated, that's all you can do. All right, back to plan number one, or number two, I should say. We're just on plan number three. <laughs> all right, we have uh, a pretty good hands here, obviously. really hard to get action from aces when you're short on the final table. When you're big stacked as well, anyway, so. Can't do shit with this hand. Uh, in position, we could be raising a little bit here if they limp. Wow. Um, all right, really class showing hands. If somebody opens, we're gonna be all in. Dig all in on the button, I think I'm calling as well. I think it's a really good spot to win some chips because I think that they're gonna, generally you see people going all in with the, the ace eight offsuits and stuff too much, right? We've seen that before. So this is us. Nice. Again, that's not a spot where we're gonna be all in with Jack and uh, suited or something. The folds, we need blockers, same story. I hope you guys uh, recognize sort of like the flow, the pattern, um, or at least uh, the, the plan that we're just following, right? Because if you think about it, um, if you think about where our chips have been, uh, well, I guess this tournament has been going too long. Final table has been a, a small part, but we've had this 12, 15, 20 big blind stack so often, but, you know, I think that... Um, Generally, when you think you have 15 big blinds in the final table, you're like, oh, we're almost, you know, one foot in the grave, almost like one foot out the door. And um, I really think that there's a lot more that you can do. You don't have to be all in that much. I mean, it feels pretty chill, right? Like the grind that we're, uh, the grind that we're going on right now, even though, you know, we had Ace King that we, uh, that we, what, we had a nice double with, but um, maybe that's that one, actually. Yeah, I think so. Maybe, I don't know. Still hard to estimate. Um, 
but you see like we've been on this 15 20 week blind and so we've just been raising we've been playing flops and we've been playing and we check raise and you know there's all these things that we've still been doing that are uh that are uh, not that crazy i'm just gonna fold this actually um no if this was him opening from there i would three bet this hand to a non all incising It's gonna be a nice all in. One of those spots where I just, you know, you just know it's a good all in. If they have ace king, so be it. And that's kind of the nice thing about uh, if you prep a lot or if you study a lot or if you look a lot of situations up. Um, I have a. Uh, uh, you know, if you if you do the work, then you know it's a good move, which also gives you so much peace of mind, right? Um, if you know that it's a that it's a shove, and you go all in, and you're convinced, and you look it up, you can even look it up later, right? If you're if you're a little bit iffy about it, but then if you hear back, like if you, if the program tells you, oh, um, you know, you can calculate these things with programs that just calculate payouts and see what good what you know what what good all ins are and stuff, and um, if they then tell you, uh, hey, this was uh, this was just good, then you can just put it to rest, right? And if you don't know, and if it's a big question mark, then you're always gonna say, oh, should I have shoved that? Oh, but the guy was a little bit loose. Oh, but, you know, then you get those sort of like questions and issues in your head, and that's just not really uh, the path that you wanna go down. Again, we just min raise with blockers, fold next hand. Um, so we can still open this now. Um, we definitely have a stack where we can still raise folds. Uh, it's a good hand to open. It's we're also on the button, which makes a big difference. Flop and open ender, good flop. We can also defend against check raises. It's a good turn. I'm just gonna check this back. Um, I think that if we bet again with our stack sizes on a final table setting, that we're just gonna get rid of a, an eight, which is not really what we need. Um, we're gonna lose some money against a jack. We also like scare cards aren't really scary for us uh, because a seven for instance makes us a straight um, And a nice thing is also like They're gonna be bluffing those a decent amount Okay, so we want a good pot 30 big blinds, three out of five. 666 guaranteed. Again, min raise. If we get re raised, we don't slow play, we just go all in. We, we need the chips in the middle. When somebody gets to like 15 big blinds, you can just start betting one big blind as a C bet. Works fantastic. I think we're just gonna get that and then I think we're short enough. I think if we call here, then we also look strong enough. Like we look super strong, right? So I think if we shove, we actually still get to represent hands like King Queen or something. Okay. I mean, that's just an insane setup, clearly, right? Like that's just, uh, um, that's just too bad, but it's not something that we can do anything about. Um, we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna crush that hand um, most of the time. I'm uh, just gonna defend, no need to all in, we can still defend. It's very easy to realize equity when you're super short. And there you see, on a king high board, one big blind bet, but also my stack size really warrants for one big blind bet, so that's good. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is just a gigantic setup. Five-handed, uh, 16 big blinds deep, queens versus kings. Literally, always, everywhere gonna go in, so... Uh, not gonna spend too much uh, on that. I mean, obviously, if this was like, if this was a really big final table for me in terms of money, then that'd be pretty fucking disgusting. I'd be pretty grossed out by it. But, you know, it's, uh, it, it really does happen. And 
Let's see. Nobody opens, we got the shove here, but now we just fold. Still seven big blinds is uh, more possibilities than you would than you would possibly think. Yikes. Mm, that might be a mistake. So this would be a hand that I would look up later. It might be a mistake. After the blinds, we're gonna have four big blinds. Also, like we're shoving from under the gun, we're blocking really strong calling hands and we shove on a guy where we have a lot of full equity on, so. I actually think that might be a mistake. Um, all in ranges when you're short like this are actually sometimes a bit looser than you might expect. Um, so there's not a whole lot of ICM. Um, gonna defend this one. If you flop a jack or seven, it's very easy to get the money in or some sort of straight draw. Um, the shorter you get, the easier it is to realize the value of your hand. So it's a fine spot to call. Gonna shove this for sure. King high for four and a half bigs. Oh, that's pretty unlucky. I'll take a bunch of high cards. Oh, that's nice. And that's pretty lucky. I do think I can find better spots than king six though. It's five is so infinitely much stronger to shove for six big blinds than king six for five. All right, big blind, big moments. Oof. Two and a half. Even if they go all in here, I think I still call. You see? If this guy just made it less, then if I go all in and he can re-isolate, but... Um, oh, I can. Wait, am I crazy? Uh, he made it too much, so I couldn't make it a full raise. Am I fucking crazy or no? One and a half. No, he could have. Nobody just decided to isolate. It doesn't matter. Thank you. Thank you, boys. There's actually no way somebody has an eight in their hand, so I feel super comfortable. Um. <laughs> nice. Time to send the tissues out. All right, we're back. Well, if I was some dumbass live pro like Phil Helmuth, I would do a whole spiel about that's why he fold the ace five because he can look in his crystal ball apparently and know that he gets nines, but. Uh, you do still get a lot stronger hands than you uh, than you might uh, assume. It's actually kind of fun to record something like this. I mean, I pretty much stream every single minute of my play, so there's really never a chance for this. And streaming, you know, because if I stream and I get a result, I can also put it on YouTube. And like streaming on Twitch is what I do mainly, right? Um, which is also, by the way, if you guys think that this is interesting, then you know definitely click the the Twitch link in the bio and give me a follow there or check that out sometime because I don't go, you know, it's not like I do this hours and hours on end in this much detail. There's a ton of stuff where I just talk to chat and interact with chat, but I go over so many of my decisions like this. So if you really enjoy this style of um, of talking about poker, then you know if you got this far in the video, then uh, watching on Twitch is definitely a good way. Um, to get more of that. All right, now we're just back to min raising modes. Um, the hands, if you're asking like hands that we're gonna be looking to shove, uh, hands that have good equity, so like six or sevens, eights, nines. I already want to start min raising because they're too strong. So six or seven, eights and suited broadways. So jack ten suited, king ten suited, king queen suited, queen jack suited, all that stuff. All right, this is good. Um, yeah, we're gonna call this. Have to run it. Nice. Nice. I mean, the king really doesn't do anything. He still needs an ace or a three. <laughs> I acted like he was dead, but this is really good news. We make a huge jump in the tournament now. I mean, if you look at, you know, he's gonna shove so many more hands than just ace high. Like, think about what he does with queen nine, you know? 
queen nine or queen 10 or jack 10 or 10 nine suited or eight nine suited. These are all hands that he's just gonna go all in. And even here we have probably like 42%, yeah, 44%. So, you know, we just gotta go for it. All right. Um, we hope that Ace-10 goes out. Ron is a friend of mine, but he's a really good player, so rather see him go. And this is really good for us. Um, we maneuvered ourselves to 900 for fourth at the minimum. Uh, we can definitely call here. Uh, Force is gonna do too well. Look at that, 70% favorite, no nine, no ace, no queen. Good, and just like that, three-handed for 1,232. Um, really deep now. We're short a stack, but it's all relatively close. Really good flop. I think that we're gonna see a lot of checks. Um, he's gonna check a lot in general here um, because, you know, if he was bluffing, uh, he wants us if he if he wants to bluff the turn he wants to make us fall to four or six it's just not gonna happen because even a four got better right because the chances that uh, he has a six is smaller now he's gonna bet and we just have to hope that we're up against like you know a good high card hand or a king um i don't think checking does a whole lot for us because if we check behind and they bet the river and we raise it's kind of obvious what we're doing anyway so um that's Definitely the worst card in the deck. I mean, with all due respect, I think this is an insanely battle in. It's like, the reason why is like, okay, let's say you have a king. Sure, you can do whatever the fuck you want with a king. I mean, I don't think it's the optimal sizing for a king anyway. But now let's say... You have a bluff. Why on earth with a bluff would you need three times spot? All in to make me fold. Right? Couldn't you just bet 15 big blinds? 18? 20? You know, I have 30 big blinds left. Couldn't you bet 25, 20? Just seems bizarre to me. I really, I really, really, really don't understand that. Too bad, bad river. Quite a few bigs in there, but it's all good. All right, so we're just gonna fold this. Uh, there's no reason to gamble for 25 big lines because that purely that would be pure gambling. Uh, if they limp, we're gonna limp. We're gonna we're gonna check. Um, we want to play suited kings and queens to the flop. Uh, suited hands have so much post-flop playability. The king is a good blocker, but that's why raising with the offsuit one would be good because then you use the offsuit one as a blocker and the suited one as a playability uh, a hand with playability. Um, if we're going to get raised from the button here, we're going to shove. Um, he's going to be super comfortable. Obviously, raising on a button, he's going to choose a lot of hands, like uh, raise a lot of hands. Um, King 10 suit is just one of those hands that performs really well uh, in all ins. Now we're just going to let them duke it out. He's effectively all in. Why he's making it 16 big blinds here out of, uh, out of 35? Uh, why he's doing that is because if I go all in and they call, um, then he knows that we have insanely strong ranges and then he can still uh, bow out, you know, and make that $440 pay jump, possibly. Uh, yeah, we can raise queen seven, why not? Still have maneuverability. We're gonna defend this. 
uh, we go back to you know the suited trash sort of being really good to raise in position uh, as well as blockers good it's gonna limp i think for raises from small blinds i also just need king x and queen x just limp folds um i think i was gonna check i think my hand plays super strong post i really don't want to face any limb raises because then i'm just kind of like fucked really good clubs miss um at this point we're just gonna have to call a lens on the river um all the natural bluffs miss right the single club hands um we have a really strong hand much stronger than they would give us credit for as well because king jack will be often raised now that they flat we will have uh we will have a natural a lot of natural bluffs ourselves right because we are gonna have the ace of clubs we are gonna have the queen of clubs um even had like nine five gets counterfeited but it's kind of silly to mention that one because i would just check that one but um, I do think that Ace, King, King, Queen are just going to go for value. So I think that he has some hero calls here, possibly. Um, so definitely can go for value. I just don't think there's a whole lot trapping there because he's not going to expect me to value shove a whole lot of King, Six on the river. So if he has a set of nines, set of fives or clubs, he's just going to value to pressure those hands. It's actually a really interesting spot. Like these Queen X and King X hands come up as three bets sometimes. I haven't three bet at all this final table, so um, I think it's a good time to try. Chip leader opens on the button. Um, you will find that uh, the solvers really like the King Seven, King Six, Queen Five, Queen Six type hands for that behavior. Um, coincidentally, I'm also going to use this hand as a three bet. We don't have to three bet very large. Um, Stacks are very shallow, fold equity is huge, ranges are weak from the button. Obviously we need a good blocker for this, we can't do this with 7-6 suited because then we unblock his ace -X. so here you see a little bit of cool navigation with uh, some 3 butt uh, gloves. Um, I was going to flat, I really don't want to turn my hand into a bluff to be honest and that's what I'm doing if I'm 3 betting. If, if I have... You know, you can say that uh, I'm gonna, that I definitely have some uh, value with this hand. But getting shoved on will be a nightmare. Because then I'm just gonna have to fold. I'm gonna check raise the flop though. Uh, turn is a bit iffy. I, I don't have many 10s unless I have two pairs that made boats, but I'm not just gonna randomly check raise a 10. Um, even though there's a lot of draws, I think I'll just do best checking. It's a little bit more natural here. Um, if he has a hand like, you know, King Nine of Spades or something, then he also might start uh, bluffing here now. Uh, just because of the amount of draws on his boards and the fact that we're three-handed, I will call this down. But it has to run out blank, right? So if a Nine of Spades comes on the river, then all of a sudden I lose to so many more hands. Um, check raising is no point. I'm over overplaying my hand because if I check raise, then I pretty much represent uh, a 10 and I have a queen. So... You know, when going for value, you don't want to represent something much, much stronger than what you actually have. Because you're not going to get called light enough, right? If the, if the value part that I'm representing is trips and I actually have top pair, um, then the hands that he's going to pay me off with are not going to be light enough. God, I really want to call. I just don't think he has like ace nine or something like that. He could have ace jack, but ace jack is also going to check the turn a lot. So I really feel like he's just fucking around with a hand like, you know, Jack-9 or something. Jack-9, or he has a 10, but it's a pretty small value bet for a 10, so it's kind of hard for me to find hands that he has. He could have ace of spades, but even then he might check a lot. 10-9, well, well, well done, well done. I do think that's for that sizing we have to call, though. Um... Okay, that's a bit big to shove actually. I misread my uh, stack size, not gonna lie. Um, when, when deciding to uh, when deciding to call this river, um, one thing that's really important is, is just the math of it, right? So the last bet, the last bet divided by total pots. 
decides our fold percentage. And our full, if our fold percentage is 25, um, then we just have to call that we have to call with three quarters of our range that beats bluffs. Very important, not just what our range is, but we definitely defeat bluffs and we just have to call with three quarters of it. So um, this small bet just makes us call a whole lot more, which is fine, you know, because we're also going to win a whole lot more and we're risking less. So. Oh, wow. Okay, it just rips. Amazing. Back in it. I mean, if you look at all the like the the, the jack nines, the eight nines, the lower spade draws that he can have. Um, um, I'm the person that he really wants to pressure here. So, okay. Well, good luck. <laughs> this is one of those reasons why people shove on the button for half their stack, right? Because then if it goes like raise, raise, they can get out for the money jump. 8-9 is 40%. Uh, yes, amazing. No queen. Nice, okay. We're heads up. So, guaranteed second. I think we navigated our way really, really well so far. Um, okay, the heads up is just such a different animal. Um... Which I can just talk about, we'll see. I'm gonna check raise, I have a six in my hand. It's a pretty dry board. Lots of hands, he can just bet fold here. Once they call, I'm gonna shut down though. It's really nice also to have an overcard to the 10. Uh, this is super important when check raising on boards like this. This hand is like, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to call another, but let's say the, the board was um, uh, queen seven five, then jack six, then would be infinitely better than jack, uh, then king six would be infinitely better than jack six. We're gonna limp a lot of ace x on the button. If they raise, we can just ship this. We can actually just ship this. Ace deuce three, ace four, plus ace five off mixes a little bit, but we can just shove uh, when a limp because the hand, I have a really good hand, but the hand plays like a fucking nub post flop, so. for when they limp to make it three and a half of blinds as uh, your pseudo trash um because it has playability post flop but it has zero uh you know when they call it has playability it's good to have some bluffs there's so much limping and heads up um because you need to limp so much because you get insane odds also normally when you're in the small blind versus the big blind you have a whole table full of people that can have a hand right so um but once you're uh, once you're heads up, you both usually just gonna have a shit hand. So you just need to see a lot of flops because my hand is gonna have a lot of equity against their shit hands. Well, I think we're gonna check the turn back and then call rivers. Hope for diamonds, of course, but uh, it's a pretty good card. It doesn't make any of his hands better, you know? So it also makes it less likely at a seven, which was li less likely to begin with. Uh, I think I'm gonna make a cool value bet here. I think it's cool. I think I'm gonna make a value bet against his ace highs. Um, he's gonna isolate with ace high hands quite often. He check all the flop, he's not betting here. So it's unlikely that I think there is a 10 or something better. I hope he doesn't have an eight somehow, but I think an eight would check the river in his spot as well. But I think it's a really cool value bet. There you go. Value betting bottom pair just feels fucking uh, next level. Uh, yeah, they size. So. 
Okay, gonna defend, very important. Um, when we're over 25 book lines, we can start 2.2 axing. There's actually, I was doing, it's funny, I did a little session warm up today and I realized that I was doing that wrong, which is quite funny. Um, I was 2.2 axing anything above uh, between 20 and 30 book lines and 2.5 axing above 35 book lines or something, but this is not good. So 2.2 axis for when we're above. Between 25 and 50 bigs. Just gonna check this. We still defend though. Again, as well, right? If they raise, we get insane odds. Like here, we have to call 1.1, we get 3.3 to 1. So it's just really good odds, especially knowing that he has a shit hand in general as well. You know, the, the less the hand strength of the average hand, the more my relative hand strength goes up. Big bet, we could check raise this sometime, but now we're just gonna go into call mode. Gonna call the turn as well, can't start falling second pair heads up. That'd be ridiculous on the turn. Um, for obvious reasons. It's gonna block bet this. It's kinda hard. Last time it was really clear where our, where our calls came from, right? Because he, he showed strength. Uh, Pre-flop, he called the flop, and then he kind of checked it down, so you know that he's very likely to be in, like, ace-high mode. Um, here, we really want somebody to be able to hero call, like, a three or a six or something. Um, yeah, he had a three, so that's good. All right, so we're going to play ace then, just for value. Uh, I will take this hand to war. If they three bet, I'm going to shove. Um, if they shove, I call. But the hand is just really strong. Heads up, this hand is just as strong as like ace-queen suited or ace-king would be on a, a full table. And there you see it. Okay, so that's just too bad. Uh, I think we assess the situations really well, you know. It's, uh, it's not too bad, we got second for 1600. Um, if we win this hand, then we're fucking golden, uh, of course. Yeah, you would have... Uh, 30 book lines left, we'd have 60 or 70 or something, but it's fine. Um, that's it, I really hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I don't know how long the video is gonna be, but if you guys enjoyed this, um, I, c I can promise we're gonna do this much more often because like I said, I uh, uh, I stream every minute that I play. It just so happened to have internet issues today that OBS wasn't working and I was already in tournament, so I figured let's make one for YouTube. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I enjoyed it, uh, actually, and um, if you wanna see more of this sort of gameplay, then I really, really highly suggest you come to Twitch. Of course, if you're just wandering by my videos, please like and subscribe. Uh, it really does help a lot. Um, yeah, see you guys out there. Peace out.